This week on RC Basics, we take a look at the basics of RC shocks and we build one along the way. Most shocks these days come pre-assembled, but I thought we'd build one together from a kit I have. That'll give us a chance to look at the internals and see how they work. When building, I like to lay out the parts in order of assembly. With all the parts laid out and organized, we can start the assembly of the shock. I like to lay a paper towel down because we're going to be using damper oil and it can get messy. We first need to coat the O-rings and the piston rod with damper oil. Damper oil comes in different weights, depending on how you want to tune your shock. The higher the number, the higher the viscosity. Also, the piston rod we are using in our example shock is not adjustable. But most shocks will use a C-clip to hold a changeable piston in. How many holes in the piston in will change the pack of the shock. The pack, oil weight, and spring rate of a shock all need to be matched for the type of driving you'll be doing, but we'll leave that for a later discussion. For now, let's stick with the basics and get back to building our shock. Start by installing the O-rings in the bottom of the shock body, stacking them to make a dual seal. Then tighten the bottom cap. Careful, the oil can make it slick. This entry level shock has a plastic body, but pricier shocks can have an aluminum shock body and even external reservoirs for added oil volume. No matter the shock you use, they all use the same basic parts. Back to our shock and we install the piston rod. It can take a couple tries. When installing the lower mount, take care to protect the piston rod. I like to use a screwdriver to help install the lower mount. Now it's time to choose the shock oil and fill it up. I usually wrap the shock body in a paper towel and try to limit any messes. Fill the shock body just to the top. Then cycle the piston rod a few times to remove any air bubbles. Add more oil to top it back off and cycle the piston a couple more times. Once all the air is removed, add the oil seal. Clean up any oil that overflowed and screw on the cap.
give it a couple of cycles and make sure it all moves freely. We need to install the springs next. Shocks can use different size springs with different rates, so make sure you use the correct ones for your application. The kit I'm using came with two different sets of springs, front and rear. For this example, I'm using the rear springs. Slip the spring over the shock body and place the lower spring perch over the piston rod to capture the coil spring. Give it another test run and make sure it operates smoothly. The kit came with a few different size damper spacers that can be used to adjust the spring tension. Entry level shocks will usually use these spacers to adjust the spring tension, but a higher grade shock most likely will have a threaded body with a nut to adjust the tension. When installing the ball collars, I like to use a pair of needle nose pliers to help pop them in place. Well, there you have it. The basics of how to build a shock and its components. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, feel free to share it with others. And if you'd like to keep up with these builds pretty much every Friday, hit that subscription button down below. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.